Alright, so now that we have our openings stitched down and we got them looking all good and everything, let's just take another look at that. So that's that nice seam that I was telling you about, the angle seam, and this is the one that's the under, the under part of the flap. Alright, so we're going to just go ahead and pin that back together. Now we're putting our buttons on. And remember, on one side, the guy apparently has a difference. So on one side, we're losing a button. Which, a, so on one side, we're losing a buttonhole, which is this side. The other side, we're going to have the four buttonholes. But we're still starting our buttons from the same distance because the the good part was that with the finish, it still landed our buttonhole at the same spot. So what you want to do is you want to double your thread. So I usually take my thread right off of the sewing machine and I'm going to pull that out and then I'm just going to have a little bit of a my thumb here where we're going to make it double and then I'm going to pull that out. So now we actually have one long piece that is doubled over to make two layers of thread. And I'm going to take those two little threads and I'm going to Go ahead and thread my needle. So we thread it into there. Pull it through. So we pull those two through. Now we're going to actually have two and two, which is going to make four layers of thread. And I do that to make my thread as super strong as possible. And typically you would have what is called buttonhole thread or button thread, which is a lot thicker than your normal sewing thread. So I got my four layers and I go ahead and knot that off and then I'm going to get started with the first button. So I'm going to start it just a little bit. I'm not going to take it all the way to the bottom. And I'm just going to go from the bottom, pull it through, and go back down. Okay, So we're going to go down and again we're going to go back up through the same one that we went through the first time. So I'm going to bring it through. And you may have to go underneath to look on the inside to see where you where the actual thread went through. For me, I've been doing it so long so I can kind of feel my way. Come back out and go back down. So it's like a little circular motion like this. You go up, down, back through, up, down. Just keep that consistency going. And I usually do this twice um, since I've threaded my thread for, th for four threads. I don't need to go through like eight times. So I can just go through twice. So I'll go through here. Um, so I start on the next one. The next side. Go down. And go back up through that same one. And go back down. And then I knot it off. Now you can do one of two things. You can knot it off, which I do it a couple times. I tie it off just to lock it in place. And then since I know I'm going to be sewing right next to it, I'll just go on the inside a little hidden. Just about a half of an inch because I know it's about the distance between the buttonholes. And then I'm going to lock that off to start my next button placement. Okay. So I lock that off. Now you can do that or if you once you got finished with the first button, you can go ahead and lock it off and cut it and just re-knot. But I am a stickler about my time and I'm big on time management. And then we're going to put this next one just right next to that one. And it's always going to be about a quarter of an inch from the edge. That's pretty much this the standard or safe way to put it and then we're going to go through it so that we're matching everything that's going across the entire jacket. Sometimes my thread gets caught up in that penny. And we're going to go back down go through the next side and we're going to do the same thing there. And we're just going to keep going. Do it again. That's the second one. And we're going to do the same thing we did the first time. We're going to knot that off. Go on the inside. Knot that off. Catch where you were. Knot that off. My threads are getting caught up with my pins here. Okay. 
Let's just get, and then we're gonna knot that off. I always like to go through my loop. That gives me a solid knot. And just tie that off. And then we're gonna do the same thing we did before. We're just gonna go up with a hidden stitch underneath the thread, underneath the fabric. Start there. I'm gonna lock that off. And that's the beginning of our third. And then we're gonna get our third button. Place it there. And then I'm gonna go through again. Find my hole there. Go back down. Ugh. And my thread again is trying to get knotted up. So sometimes you have to stop and just smooth that out. I'm gonna go back down. And make sure you pull it all the way through because sometimes it gets a little bubble. And now I'm going to start on the next side of the button. Go up, go down, circular, go up, and go down. And then we have our final button. And remember, this is the one that only had... It's going to only have the three buttonholes, but it's all good. Okay, we got that one in place. I'm going to go up and down and up and down. And then we're going to finish off the second side of that buttonhole. Second set of holes. Oops, can't find my hole there. Okay, and there it is. Up and down. and up back through again and down and I recommend that you use a thimble because it can get a little hard but I don't know thimbles just creep me out for some reason that metal hitting metal just irritates me and maybe you got some better suggestions about that or better thimbles out there I don't know I just stopped sewing with them I never was able to do it because it just felt like it always got in my way so my finger when I'm really sewing a lot, it stays very it stays very beat up, shall I say. Yes. So my fingers are pretty tough. The tips of my finger are pretty tough. So we're gonna lock that off. Boom. And we're done with that part of it. And just cut that thread away. And you just do the same thing on the other side. So I think my clip got shortened off a little because I ran out of taping memory on my phone. But this is what it looks like. So now we've got these two. And this is what they look like. And they look very much uniform. Even though this one has four buttonholes. And this one has three. It's very consistent and it's very neat. And it still looks good. So keep in mind, you know, that things are not going to be absolutely perfect. The way they originally were. Sometimes just based off the actual finish of where things are going to fall. Because people have differences. Um, and it could have been that he could have been even and then we would not even be speaking of this. Alright, so the last part of this project now is going to be putting the actual lining down. So, I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to put the lining down.